So, Sergio, President from Ireland, asked me the fourth question, which is the biggest and the best question. Do you think neurology can help corporations to improve their business systems? And the obvious answer is, uh, if you don't, it's going to be a nightmare in the next uh, few decades. Uh, definitely, neurology, or more exactly, neuroscience, uh, can definitely help uh, corporations, and it's essential to survival and to thriving in the future. Um, it's a big field, and uh, there's uh, an overlap between different fields in different areas. For example, uh, in economics, there's behavioral economics, uh, there's cognitive psychology in psychology, and there's neuroeconomics in the field of neuroscience, uh, which encompasses also neurology. Uh, where to start, really? Well, the P's. Every uh, activity uh, rotates around people, places, prices, promotion, planning, and uh, other people. Deming had his own P's. These are my favorite P's that I use. And of all these P's, the biggest P is people. And for my work in the health sector, or for any business, uh, staff and customers or patients and other stakeholders are all made up of people, as a rule, in the main. Um, so, starting from inside the activity, your staff, they're people too. And uh, we have to understand how people think and work to facilitate their lifestyles and their productivity. But keeping it simple, neuroscience includes uh, simple things like motor activity, sensory activity, and thinking. So to have all that work properly, motor activity is a key to thinking correctly. That's because our muscles and ligaments and, and sensors in those organs drive our cerebellum, which drives our brain, which helps us think. So once upon a time, the economy was mainly a, a manual economy, and it's moving towards a, a, um, a service-driven economy, which will be ever more a knowledge-based economy. So learning will be fundamental for our staff, and as our customers learn more, also for them too. And we must learn to adapt to customers that learn to adapt as well. Um, I'm going to talk about things from a healthcare point of view. Uh, other people of cross sectors, um, just two names that come to mind are Sen, won an economics uh, Nobel Prize, and the one I hold dearest is Kahneman, who is a psychologist who won a Nobel Prize for economics as well. So, one person who was skilled in thinking about how people decide things and choose things actually uh, won a Nobel Prize because his work was then applied uh, to the economy and is used by many, many corporations. And in Italy there's a guy called Mottolini who is uh, a philosopher but works, he's, he's worked into the areas of neuroscience because philosophy thinking overlaps with neuroscience and so neuroeconomics. And neuroeconomics is a big field in itself with subsections like neuromarketing where we learn about people's tastes and how they think and how their brains work to then market and promote another peak promotion to customers. So going back to the workplace again, the place is uh, where people work. And it can be designed uh, to make people work better, more productively, more happily. Happiness was also studied by Kahneman, and if people are more happy, then uh, they're more productive as well, and better customers too. So the first thing is the structure of people and the places they work in. So it's not difficult now to design the workplace around the person, rather than fit people to the place. The exceptions, uh, jet fighters have got a limited size, so pilot height is limited to the size of a jet, jet fighter. Otherwise, office spaces with seating design uh, can be accommodated to accommodate workers better. And desktop height and so on can all be varied relatively cheaply and easily, if we think about doing so. Lighting too uh, can be varied through the day to make people more productive. And there's a famous effect where changing light uh, makes people more productive. Uh, we did think it was making light stronger and help productivity, but we tend to believe now it's just a change in lighting that makes a change in, in people's attitudes and work efforts. Uh, having people move is vital. Uh, sedentarism is the new smoking, they say, and sitting down for uh, an hour a day or two hours a day is equivalent to one or two cigarettes a day. And three hours a day sitting shortens our lives by two years. So, bearing that knowledge in, in mind, uh, we need to make our work environments 
uh, moving, moving, movement friendly. So people do get up and move, go to the coffee machine or better still the water machine uh, to drink water to make the brains work better and move at the same time. Uh, but movement and work environments, best designed, are great, but it can all be undone if the workers go home and dive on their sofa to watch football games, eat popcorn and stare at their tablets at the same time. So ideally, a corporation that wants to have a workforce that's productive and that stays with them for a long time, then uh, explain lifestyle habits outside the workplace is a good idea as well. And a good example I'll give is soccer players. One landmark soccer player came to me with uh, a pubalgia or pain in his groin and his adductors that uh, was resistant to multiple echographic scans and what have you in treatment. And his problem wasn't the training or the shoes or the pitch. He played the PlayStation for four hours a day and strained his adductor repeatedly. So this soccer player with pubalgia, uh, after a couple of weeks of me, still wasn't better. So I asked him what he did in his spare time. Now he wasn't playing soccer anymore. And basically he replied that he plays four hours of PlayStation per day. And the posture he used was an exasperated squatting posture with his knees between his, with his elbows between his thighs, stretching adductors. So the poor strain in his adductors couldn't heal properly. So the cure, if you want to call it that, was to make him play patient with, with his legs crossed up on a chair. And he played soccer again within a couple of weeks. So his playing time on a pitch was limited by the fact that his work, his, his life habits at home were not correct. And I find that in my work all the time. Patients that can't work or lift correctly, often the, the cause is not the lifting at work, but how they perform or behave at home. Uh, with house cleaning, uh, watching TV, a choice of bed, pillow, and so on. So an essential part of getting people back to work in my job is sorting out what to do when they're not at work. How they sit at a table, uh, eat, slumped or straight, looking at a TV, twisted to one side, and so on. Uh, so paradoxically, companies may invest many thousands of euros in uh, monitors that go up and down, but don't ask what workers use at home for their IT uh, needs watching Facebook on, uh, on a tablet, for example, with, with head bent down and so on. So a great application and a low cost application, knowledge based application of neuroscience to the workplace is teaching workers how to live outside the workplace. And that may be counterintuitive, but uh, uh, explained that way. I hope it makes sense to some people in, in decision making positions in companies. Uh, another side to lifestyle habits is also eating and drinking. If you haven't got uh, enough oxygen, uh, enough water and the right food coming in, then uh, the brain doesn't work very well. And then doesn't work very well, doesn't perform very well. And also toxins, we all know, uh, but society is very sensitive now to pollution. But uh, as a small um, side issue, going off topic slightly, if you forgive me, is uh, did you know that between 50 and 90% of the drugs that we take go into our bodies and come out again and go out into the water and the environment. So uh, improving health in the workplace and outside the workplace hopefully will lead to less uh, uh, drug use and abuse and a happier environment. So again, neuroscience applied to companies uh, can be a, a simple level uh, where we try and avoid back pain, neck pain and arm pain in our workers. Um, which is not no small thing. Uh, in the UK, there are 130 million working days lost to neck pain, back pain, and so on. Uh, uh, sorry, 31 million working days lost to back pain out of 130 million working days lost to illness in the UK. Uh, so reducing that 30 million uh, is a big saving for the economy and for companies, uh, and increases productivity and happiness in the workforce. Obviously, uh, neck pain and back pain, uh, a top four causes of um, cost in the global burden of disease, for example. So neuroscience applied to companies can help reduce back pain, neck pain at the most simple level. But the other end, the brain is a is more interesting end. And in behavioral economics, Steve Levitt made the field famous with his books and, uh, and studies in this area, which is being applied to the market as well. Simple application is uh, in some countries uh, when big electricity bills are sent out, 
they put an unhappy face by the bill and that reduces uh, consumption of electricity. It's a simple low-cost maneuver but it's based on sound neuroscience uh, and it helps uh, the economy when it's applied that way. Um, applications as well are becoming mainstream. Uh, Downing Street has a nudge unit in the UK. So neuroscience and neurology applied to companies or the workplace uh, extends from reducing back pain and neck pain to other levels as well. Um, from a back pain point of view and neck pain point of view, those are two of the top 10 causes of costs to companies through days lost from work, which in the UK totaled 130 million working days per year lost, of which 30 million are from back pain alone. So simple measures uh, in neuroscience applied to workplace can reduce days lost from work from back pain, neck pain and arm pain obviously. But at the other end, at the brain, Simple measures can be used to make the brain work better as well, and on with the workforce and with customers, obviously. Uh, the area of behavioural economics, which overlaps with neuroeconomics, was made uh, famous and popular with the armchair economist on the one hand, and by Steve Levitt with Free Economics, another, another best-selling book recently. Um, one example of that research and of those observations applied to uh, the workplace is um, an electricity company that put a simple unhappy face by big electricity bills. And the unhappy face was shown to reduce consumption in those households. So these are simple low cost measures that can be used if we understand how the brain works and if companies understand how uh, brain work, brains work as well. From a cognitive point of view, there are a few traps though that we find along our way. We might all be aware of visual blind spots and uh, tricks that magicians use to uh, make us believe the unbelievable sometimes. Those are sometimes due to our gullibility and some due to hard wiring in our brains that make us not see certain things. At the simplest level we have a blind spot on our retina uh, which is where the optic nerve comes into the retina and there's a gap within our receptors and so no light is perceived on that area. But when we look around we don't see a spot. Uh, there is a spot but our brain very cleverly patches up the spot in our occipital lobe and other areas of the brain so we don't perceive this spot, the blind spot. Uh, there also exist cognitive blind spots where our thinking can be brought to be to think in a certain way uh, which might be completely wrong. Uh, magicians, for example, don't make people get cut in half and don't make little girls disappear uh, under a blanket. But we do believe those things have happened. Magic isn't real, we don't think. They're just areas of the brain that can think things have happened. So if we understand uh, cognitive traps, uh, which we study by other people, like Kahneman uh, has illustrated those, as I mentioned before, then we can adapt our workplace and our systems of working and sales uh, to better fit the customer or our worker. So the good news is, uh, research into the brain is galloping ahead. And the stuff we're discovering uh, is mounting up and piling up uh, in ways that we're not quite sure how to apply it yet but the information is there and more good news is that governments are taking notice uh, the UK uh, Downing Street has a nudge unit which is based on taking ideas from uh, cognitive economics and uh, psychology sorry and neuroeconomics and applying it into uh, government administration workplaces and so on and the EU is ahead of the curve as well. They have a behavioural economics unit too. And many companies too are already uh, uh, forming workers in this area too. So there is good news on the horizon. Things will only get better. We must be optimistic. And that depends on our brains too, and exercise and good diet and lifestyle, which is applied neuroscience, but with shorter words.